And Jesus encourages not just to ask for our physical needs to be met, but ask for our spiritual needs to be met. Look what he says here. Forgive our what? Our debts as we ourselves have forgiven our debtors. Many of us in here, we might have debts. We're looking forward to the day that we pay the debt off, right? And it's over with. And there's this picture that we have a debt before God. We owe him. But in this case, we know this is a debt that we could never pay. And we're grateful that God can actually forgive us. We'll talk more about that in a second. I'm going to skip verse 13. We'll come back to it. But I want to see the context of verse 14. Look what Jesus says. And if you forgive others their sins, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive others, your Father will what? Will not forgive your sins. Man, that's easy preaching. That's hard living right there, isn't it? Let's talk about these two important principles from this verse. First, you and I can confidently come before our Father and we can ask Him to forgive us for our sins. Yes, we've wronged Him. Yes, we owe Him. Yes, we cannot pay Him back. But that's why He freely forgives. That's why Jesus died for us. That's what grace is, correct? I think I told some of y'all this story. I might have told it in here, but it's it's just blowing me away. A few weeks ago, we had ADT come in, and, and they were going to put a new console and fix some things. And, and this guy shows up, and he's huge. I mean, he's got he's tatted up, and he's massive, huge. He's got a beard, and um, he's just a big old burly guy. Come to find out he's a big teddy bear. He's awesome. But he served in the military. He served seven different tours of duty. He's killed people. And he, as we're talking, we talk, start talking about spiritual things. He's like, man, I don't go to church. And, you know, he's, it's like talking about hypocrites and all kinds of stuff. But then ultimately, here's what it comes down to. And I have this talk with Terry in my living room. Um, and and I, said, I said, Terry, here's the reality. Um, you haven't gone too far for his grace. And it's like tears started pitting up in his eyes. And see, Terry had come there to put a console on. But when he got there, uh, the console had not been shipped. And I thought the console would be on his truck. And it's not on his truck. And so I look at him, I said, Terry, what if the reason why you showed up today not to install anything was so that we could have this conversation? So that tangible, in a tangible way, with somebody who's touchable, you can look in the eyes, could look you in the eyes and speak the scripture to you and tell you this. Watch this. Terry, you've not gone too far for God's grace. You know that guy listened, he stuck around the house for an hour or whatever? Walked out of the house, and I said, I encouraged him. He said, man, I take my little girl to church, but I'll drop her off. I'm like, well, man, model for her, take her. You know, but I continued to encourage him, follow Jesus, seek the Scripture, know who Jesus is. He watched some of the videos that I sent him and, and stuff, and, and he's, he's tracking on that. And so um, he had to show up the other day to come with, we've actually got the console. And um, turns out that console doesn't work. So he'll be coming back a third time. <laughs> And we're developing a friendship. And next time we're going out to lunch together, evidently. And so we're developing a friendship. And, and Terry's a sweethearted guy. And he's, he's got a smile on his face. Gives me a big bear hug when he first sees me, you know. And you're going, this guy's ADT. How's that happen? And it happens because God allows this stuff. It's so cool. And then, and then Terry, um, he tells me my Easter was awesome. I go, really? Why is your Easter awesome? He said, I went to church. He says, first time I've been around church in four years. He said, my daughter's sitting there with me, and my daughter says, Daddy, do you want to come to children's church with me? And he's like, you know, again, tatted up and beard and whole deal. And he's like, he's like, no, I don't think they're going to let me into children's church. And, and she says, then, Daddy, I'll stay with you. Matter of fact, his wife, he said, on the way back, they're talking, and his wife's like, did you enjoy it? Yeah, I enjoy it. We're people friendly. Yeah, they're friendly. And, and she said, will you come back with me next Sunday? Y'all come back with you next Sunday. Will you come Wednesday night? No. Nope. He's like, let's hold the brakes there. I'm not doing <laughs> everything. And, and so I encouraged her. I, I said, Terry, I'm glad you're going to church. I'm glad you're meeting some people who love Jesus who are going to care about you. I'm glad you're modeling that for your daughter. But, but Terry, what happens to you if you die tonight at 1159? Terry, you need Jesus, man. You need to turn from your sin and trust Jesus. All those other things are great, but follow Jesus. And he's listening. This big, burly military guy is listening to the gospel message. And listen, that guy needs to know that Jesus said, you can pray, forgive our debts, and guess what God can do? He can forgive you because of what Jesus did. But then there's this warning, y'all, and the warning is, if you don't forgive others, he won't forgive you. 
And here's the warning for you and me. We could go, but you don't know what they've done to me. Really? Now, listen to me. I don't want to be flippant about this. Some of you have been badly, badly, like physically abused. Don't hear that I'm saying that's not significant because it is. But a lot of us, our stuff is pretty flippant. Well, they didn't treat me right, or they said they were going to do something, and they didn't, or you know, whatever, right? And then we're going to hold that against them? What has Jesus forgiven us for? What's he forgiven us for? Jackie, how long you got? I mean, right? We could do... What's he forgiven us for? Are we really going to not forgive others? With this warning that if we don't forgive them, guess what? We won't be forgiven? Really? You're going to stand before the God of the universe. I got a good mat on. He goes, you talk about a mat on. And Jesus died for you and you're not going to forgive other people when they sin against you. So you've wronged others. Others have wronged you. Forgive as you've been forgiven. We could sing the song, let it go, let it go. I mean, we could. Let it go. Trust that He's forgiven you. You've heard the old saying, man, being bitter and unforgiving is like you drinking the poison expecting it to kill the other person. Have you figured this out yet? That living that way is going to make you miserable. You know that, right? How about you just lay it at the Lord's feet and say, Lord, I don't, I don't even know they're willing to be forgiven. They're not even, but as far as I'm concerned, if they came and asked me for forgiveness today, I'm going to say I'm going to forgive you. To me, I'm going to be your best friend? No, but I'm going to forgive you. Right? I'm going to be gracious in that way.